<laughs> Hello everyone. Hello. I've not Paul. spoken to some out of people forever. Mm -hmm. uh, my name's Paul Rivercock. That's who I am. That's what I do. And that's where I work. It's a new post. I've been a post for about six months. And the role of it is basically to develop community partnerships with voluntary community and social enterprise organisations and the hospital trust to improve patient care, service delivery, and make sure that our populations are, main, are able to maintain their health. So I'm going to talk to you very quickly about the single hospital service and what it is. First question to ask is why we create a single hospital service. These are the general, as I call, general health inequality issues that Manchester has. So if you look up there, we've got <coughs> highest rate of early death and respiratory, breathing diseases, highest number of smoking-related deaths, deaths, sorry, one of the highest rates of child poverty in the country, nearly 3,000 people diagnosed with dementia in August 2015, so that's a nearly two and a half years ago, so that number of 40 will have increased, and some 350 people die from cardiovascular heart disease in Manchester every year. In Trafford, because our hospital trust does cover Trafford as well, so it's the whole city of Manchester and the borough of Trafford, while there's less deprivation than there is in Manchester, we do have an older population. So the case of change. A lot of challenges faced in our hospital services. What we all know and what we're aware of is that um, you know, care is fragmented. There's an unacceptable variation of care between the different hospitals and the different hospital settings across the city. There's a staffing challenge and a need to move to consistent seven-day services for our patients and to meet that increased demand for services. We also have issues with financial deficits and sustainability. So Sir Jonathan Michael conducted an independent review for the Manchester Health and Wellbeing Board, which is a partnership board between the local authority, the NHS and other, and other interested parties, in 2016. And it was agreed to create a new citywide hospital trust for the city of Manchester and the communities we serve, and Trafford. Mustn't forget Trafford. So what's the vision? Well, the vision is to create a new foundation trust that provides the ideal platform to deliver the benefits of a single hospital service to the population of Manchester, Trafford, and the wider region. And in the boxes there, you can see some of the areas where we hope that the new organisation will improve the health and quality of life of our diverse population. So hopefully the organisation, when it come, now it's come together, in part, I'll explain that in a minute, it will excel in quality, patient, <coughs> quality safety and patient experience. That hopefully it's recognised internationally as a leading healthcare provider, that it attracts, develops and retains great people, and some of whom are here today. Hello everyone. It plays a full part in the Greater Manchester Health and Social Care Economy, and it undertakes large-scale research, innovation and teaching for the benefit of the NHS. So this is the single hospital service. These are the hospitals of the new trust. So currently, as of the 1st of October, the trust that, on, 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 look on the right hand side of the screen, they were the old trust name. So Central Manchester University Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust and University of Hospital of South Manchester NHS Foundation Trust joined together as a single organisation this year. So the hospitals in the new trust are the Manchester Royal, where I'm based, St Mary's Hospital, the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital, the Royal Eye Hospital, and the University Dental Hospital of Manchester. In Trafford, we have Trafford General Hospital and the new Altrincham Hospital in the town centre. And also in the south of the city, we have Withenshaw Hospital and Withington Community Hospital. In 12 to 18 months' time, it's planned that North Manchester General Hospital will join that service. So the Hospital Trust will be co-terminus, that means it will have the same boundaries, the same area as the City Council. And Trafford. <laughs> Keep saying, and Trafford. And Trafford. <laughs> and Trafford. You mustn't forget Trafford. So what have we achieved before we joined in 2017? With these on, on the left-hand side, the CMA and NHS improvement, I will talk about in a minute. We also conducted a lot of patient benefit cases. And we also, and that's why I'm holding this piece of paper to make sure I actually get the information right, put together what was called a post-transaction integration plan. And what that means is that it's a plan that the Trust has developed to describe the processes and systems that Manchester University Foundation Trust will have in place on day one and day 100. And to ensure that the organisation is safe, effective and well-governed, 
and how we optimise delivery and inter of integration benefits over time. So that's an important plan that everyone across the trust is working to. Looking at these two areas, these two organisations on the left hand side, so the Competition and Markets Authority cleared the merger on the 1st of August, that was very important, that was one of two major processes we had to go through. It, the CMA believed that the, the merger will be of benefit to patients, and patients are expected to benefit from the merger include those at risk of heart attack or strokes, and those who need vascular surgery or kidney stone removal, amongst other interventions and treatments. We also had to go through NHS improvement and what was called a board to board challenge, which sounds like the six chair challenge on X Factor. It's not that <laughs> complex or that cutthroat, but I remember the days it was happening, there was a lot of people running in between rooms. I remember that very clearly. So we had to put together a full business case and integration plan, make sure that was approved, and also advise the Competition and Markets Authority on the patient benefits cases. So the process, all the way through from, it, from start to completion, stayed on track and was achieved in 2017. Having the CMA clearance and NHS, I improved, well, the NHS improvement clearance meant that, along with widespread engagement, so if you look at the engagement here, over 500 plus clinicians were engaged. We had a survey that went out over 3,000 responses. There was around 13 plus months of consultation, and that's from when the, the plan to bring the, to bring the hospitals together into a single hospital just started, and it is actually continuing because North Manchester have joined us for, as I mentioned, for about 12 to 18 months. The reasons behind that are quite complex, but we're, we're working to make sure that when North Manchester just joined the trust that everything is sorted and everything is arranged so that basically the transition and the joining will be as seamless as possible. So from the 1st of October we became Manchester University NHS Foundation Trust which is a big, big organisation. It's the largest foundation trust in England. It's important to note though that all the hospitals in that trust will keep their current names and their individual identities. Each hospital will have a Chief Executive and a Chief Operating Officer while they were in the, under the umbrella of the trust, they will still act as independent, in some way, hospitals. So what are the successes to date? Well, the successes we've had is that we've had a governing body, body elected that include links to community partners. We're able to quite proudly say that MAC as an organisation have been invited to send a representative to sit on the governing body along with the Manchester BME network. Our interim or trust board and executive are in place on our integration process, which is that post-transaction integration plan, the day one, big mouthful, <laughs> day one targets were met, and day one to 100 targets that are on target to be achieved. A lot of the team integration processes have begun to, to take place. <coughs> I've only been in post six months, this is a brand new post, which has come as part of this merger. So I've been going out and doing a lot of meeting of colleagues who are based in, in what was UHSM, as well as within central Manchester. And as time goes on, I'll start to move them up into the north of the city and meet colleagues who are based at North Manchester General Hospital. <coughs> I think what we all recognise and what we, we hope is obvious is that it's an opportunity to build on strengths of organisations. I've been absolutely astounded by the fantastic work I've heard about in the south side, which was University Hospital South Manchester. There's some fantastic initiatives that are going on, and the people I've met have all been fantastic, and it's a pleasure to work with them, as well as the colleagues within Central as well. So there are, if you do have any questions, as Claire said, please wait until the panel at the end. Thank you for your attention. Can't believe I got through that without any flaws. And that is me, thank you very much.